live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2018. Brought to you by Informatica. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE live here in Las Vegas at the Venetian Ballroom. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Informatica World 2018. I'm John Furrier, your host and analyst here with Peter Burris, host and analyst here for two days of coverage. Our next two guests are uh, Jitesh Guy, who's the Senior Vice President, General Manager, Data Quality, Security, and Governance for Informatica, and Barry Green, the Chief Data Officer for Bank of Ireland. Great to see you, Jitesh. Great to have you on theCUBE. Thanks. Great to be here. So, love having um, two, two smart people talking about data. GDPR is right around the corner on Friday. You're at the Bank of Ireland, so you're in the middle of it. One, you're in, <laughs> you're in, the, in the territory. You're in the heart of... Don't get any sleep. <laughs> yeah, I get lots of sleep. <laughs> hey, what, talk about your role at the bank. What are you guys doing? I want to get into the GDPR. It's right on our doorstep. It's going to have major implications for data as a strategic asset. Talk about what you do. So for me, we've created a data management framework. Framework's pretty simple, map process, get context for data, um, put it into the business data model, assign ownership, put data quality over it, and then maintain it using a risk model, operational risk model. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's GDPR or BCBS, whatever it is, it's about adding value to data, understanding data, using it for the, and making sure you've got better customer experience, all the good things. It's, you know, GDPR is important, but it's not the only thing. You guys aren't new to, to managing data, and certainly with compliance, you're a financial bank. So it's not a new thing. What is, how is GDPR being rolled out? How is it impacting you guys? What are you paying attention to? What's the impact? So <clears throat> the big thing about GDPR is we're having to understand where our key customer data sits in the physical systems. We're looking at mapping key processes so we understand what it's used for. We're assigning ownership to people who own data so we can basically make decisions about it in the future. Um, GDPR is a bit like BCBS. It's going to evolve, right? You, you, you're not going to be GDPR compliant on May 25th. You're going to have to put in place the infrastructure, the tooling, um, the governance, the management to make sure that as an organization, you know, you are using data the way it's supposed to be. If you want to be a digital organization, you have to manage data. This is just pushing along that evolution of data being important to an organization. But just as Y2K wasn't about making the world safe for mainframes in the year 2000, it forced a separation, an understanding of the separation that's required between applications and data. So GDPR is another one of those events. It's forcing a separation Separation in this case between data and the notion of data assets. Correct. So take us through how the thought process of GDPR has catalyzed new thinking within the bank about how we think about data differently as a consequence. I think what it's done, so we, we've, we've developed the framework so we can apply it to any problem, right? I think what it's done is it's raised up data's, the risk of data more generally. So people talk about data as an asset, I talk about data as a liability, right? So it's a contingent liability if you think about GDPR. Um, it's raised that awareness up that we can't continue to operate and treat data the way we have in the past. So there's a whole cultural change going on around how we treat data. Um, and there's a big understanding training going on about everyone knowing why they use data, making sure that they don't use it for the purpose it's not used for. And, and generally, it's a big education cultural change. Barry, how would you describe the mindset for this new thinking? Because certainly I agree with you. It's at the strategic nature, center of the, center of the, center of the value proposition right now, in all aspects, not just some department. What's the mindset that people should be thinking about when they think of data? Okay, should I have access to this data? So do I need it for the role I'm undertaking? Um, and if it was my data, would I be treating it, would, you know, how would I treat it? How would I want it to be treated? I mean, if you were the subject. It, yeah, exactly. It's almost like, you know, if I had my data being used for a certain thing, context, is that the way I'd want my data treated? It's almost in you know, the old adage, you know, do unto others as you would have you do unto you, right? Yeah, ethics is important. Yeah. Chitesh, talk about the Informatica opportunity because you guys, really, timing's pretty awesome for Informatica with the catalog. You guys have an interesting opportunity right now to come in and do a lot of good things for clients. That's, uh, that's exactly right. We've, uh, we've been working very hard with our clients over the last 18 months uh, to help them on this GDPR journey. Uh, what we you know, think of as supporting their privacy and protection initiatives. And you, you mentioned catalog. Um, you know, our, we have our enterprise data catalog powered by Clare, our AI machine learning capabilities and metadata. Um, and that helps you get an organized view of all your data assets within the enterprise. Leveraging that same technology, uh, we have a secure source offering, which is effectively a data subject catalog to help our customers understand 
where exactly is the data subject sensitive data? Not where the organization's data is, but the data subject sensitive data within the organization. Where their national identifier information is, how, where their personal uh, home address, email, phone, et cetera is, and how many occurrences and what systems. Why? So that our customers can take that information and more effectively respond to the data subject. If the data subject wants to invoke, you know, the right to be forgotten or right for data portability, et cetera, as well as take that same information and demonstrate to the regulator that they are processing this sensitive data with the appropriate uh, with the appropriate consent from the data subject. As well as have the systems, I presume, to then be able to expose to the subject. Uh, the reasons why the data may in fact still be part of the asset of the bank. Correct. So I, I hadn't heard that before. We've had other companies tell us that they're going to help companies find subject data, but you guys are taking a, taking a step further and allowing the bank, for in this case, to be able to look at that data from the subject's perspective. Exactly right, because it's not just with some regulations, financial regulations, you need to demonstrate the quality and trustworthiness of the data. Here, at, to the regulator, here it's demonstrating to the data subject themselves, the individual themselves, how you're processing, how you're treating their data, how protected or unprotected it is, and, and how you're using it to market to them. How you're using to, the, to so sell to them. Does that become part of the metadata? That's exactly right. It's using the same metadata foundation to, but focused on the data subject specifically. Interesting, interesting. Talk about the protection aspect of it. If I say I want my right to be forgotten, and you can hold data for something, where's the, where's the protection aspect for the business and the user? Is there conflict there? How do you guys handle that? Yeah, so it's interesting. Um, there is a conflict, so there's a conflict already with um, existing regulation. So, you know, um, the thing that a lot of people aren't talking about is that you can hold data. So if someone can't just delete data if you want to hold an account or, you know, there's a reason for using it, you've got a legitimate use for using it, you can still hold it, but you have to tell the customer why you're using it. So there's a lot of context here, which they didn't have before. So it's giving the customer the power to understand what their data is being used for, the context it's being used for, and so they know it's not going to be used for sort of spurious marketing campaigns. It's being used for, you know, for, for a reason that's... Is that extra work for you guys, or is that automated? This is where we start to get into the question, next yeah. question, which is well, AI. Well, the context, the context is the metadata and the ability Correct. to be able to capture that context explicitly as these data elements have this context in metadata allows you to do that with some degree of certainty and you know, relatively low cost, I assume. Yeah, it's all about reuse, right? So a lot of what we've done in the past, and I'm just where at the bank, I'm talking about everyone's done in the past, is they've understood something and then thrown it away. So with Axon, you can record it, you know, record it, and then with the metadata, you can join the metadata in Axon, so you can join a high-level process, understand what data is used, the context it's used for, who owns it, quality, all these kind of business-relevant things. Then you put the metadata in it, and you've got a system view, it's very, very powerful. So the technology is starting to allow us to automate, um, but it's all about gathering it, reusing it, and making sure you understand it, right? It's really you know, important. From a, from a data subject catalog standpoint, you get the technical metadata, it tells you across your data landscape where all the sensitive information is uh, for Barry Green. You marry that up with the business metadata of how is that sensitive information being used in every step of, let's say, customer onboarding, your mission critical business processes within the organization. And that's what you demonstrate to a data subject or a regulator of this is how I'm processing it based on this consent. Now, if they invoke their right to be forgotten, there's various things you can do there because there's conflicts. You can just mask the data using our masking capabilities and then it's truly forgotten. Or you can archive the data and remove it from uh, a particular business process that is marketing or selling to them if that's So if you have choice, there's some flexibility. Correct, correct. Or, or, or sli maybe slightly different, let me make sure I got this right. You can get work out of that data in an appropriate way. So the customer can be forgotten so that there's this kind of work now that you cannot apply that data to, marketing, whatever else it might be, but when it comes to understanding better products or building better products, whatever else, through masking, you can apply the data still to that work because it's a legitimate use under the law. Exactly. But also think about the fact you've masked key critical data, right? So the thing about um, data privacy in general was, you know, if you can't understand a data subject, so if you, if you can hide certain pieces of data and you can't identify them, you then aggregate it, you can, it's not personal data anymore. So, you know, there's, there's some real nuances. A lot of people aren't talking about these things, but you know, they're I'm sure there. these nuances will be um, 
surfaced. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> certainly it's a, it's a beginning of a generational shift. There are going to be some pain points coming online. I mean, we're hearing some people complaining here and there. You guys are you know, used to this. Some industries are like used to dealing with right. you know, compliance, like no big deal. Some people are fast and loose with their data, like, wait a minute. This is, this is an opportunity, right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, like I said, you can't be a digital bank or you can't be a, have a digital proposition if you don't understand your data, you know, you, and you don't understand it and manage it. So this is an opportunity to do this across the enterprise. Well, it exposes companies that have not planned for and architected data, right. whether that's investment in data engineering or have staff. This is a huge issue. And, it's and tools, and, and tools and that can yeah. support that process. Yeah, I mean, if you, you got I mean, people are looking in their organization going, oh man, we really don't have it, or they're ready. The, the exciting part is, you know, organizations have focused on quality and trustworthiness of their data. We're now taking that same data and focusing on the privacy and protection and the ethical treatment of it, and leveraging the appropriate technologies, which happen to be very similar fundamentally for quality and trust and privacy and protection. Yeah. And, and in the absence of a global standard for GDPR, we're, we're seeing organizations adopt GDPR as a de facto standard. In, in fact, Facebook just announced that they're yeah. treating all users' uh, data, <laughs> you know. Well, we'll see. Yeah, that was, that was yeah. one of our research predictions. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Pretty obvious, I mean, we'll see how it has any teeth or anything, but, um, you know, Facebook's got their own challenge. But it's an opportunity for a clean sheet of paper. Um, we'll we'll know everyone. Friday, May 25th. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there's going to be a ton of class <laughs> action lawsuits against Facebook. <laughs> Jitesh Barry, thanks for coming on. Great to see you Pleasure. again. Pleasure, thanks, thanks for having us. everything in Ireland. We're here out in the open, in Informatica World, right in the, right in the Solutions Expo, this is theCUBE, bringing you all the data, right here in the cataloging at thecube.net, check it out. I'm Pete John Furrier with Peter Burris. Stay with us for more day two coverage at Informatica World after this short break.